was brillig, and the slithy toads did gyre and trolled their hapless lovers out of sight. The mantled mariner with shining belt around his slipper-clad silken ankle, and his soft gait with crutch and his bad leg, and the maimed minstrel whose thin autographic voice more faintly limps into the solemn air than the last gasping organ's exhaled breath, his tall tattered kirtle all over, and who ambles like the haggard of yore with skeleton staff and the unlettered crown calls in the moon, the moonlit towers of yore. Now she is giving birth. The labor has been easy, like the entrance of a lover, it seemed. Her soul went out to it, it has gone again. My child, the unfallen child, as if a thousand luminous infant seeds swarming in the warm soil, his forefathers lay beneath her belly in myriad disconnected energies, and now she, who has no need of ancestors, casts them out of the womb of life and is born into their place, in place of the true ancestor and the true descendant. The old river deep in the far northern reaches of her heart is glad. She no longer lives in the river's bowels, nor lives there without the river. They who grow old and die forget their beginnings. She remembers. But what is the sense of remembrance in the indifferent present, which is a seedbed, a source of existence, and may yet be disturbed? There is always a certain amount of scandal attached to the institution of paternity. <laughs>